I look like a soldier ready for battle. I was placed as the captain of a Muslim cadet, what we call boot camp for the bad guys who put them in shape. And you see the gentleman on the right, have a little bit more age on, a little more season, a little bit more mellow, more contemplative. That's where I am today. But none of this would have not been possible if it was not for my father as a Haji Sham Jack. You know, when people used to ask me my name, when my father was living, I would say, my name is Muhammad Ibn Hisham Jai. But when my father passed away, I said, my name is Muhammad Jai Ibn Hisham. I wanted to remember my father every time I remember my name. Wow. Because he was busy. My father was my teacher. He was my brother. He was my companion. We traveled together. And he was a very good friend of my colleague Shabbat Malcolm X. You know, they didn't allow the history of Malcolm X to be exposed in the South until the late 80s. But as you see, Malcolm was one of my mentors because he was a person who believed not only in civil rights, but human rights. And he looked at the plight of all the disenfranchised people around the world and saw that we had a common call right in America. I grew up also in the Dr. King days, watching black and white TV as people of color was beaten down, washed down, incarcerated, brutally beaten not by mob or by law enforcement officers. You see, we don't realize what that Hajime Shabazz and Dr. King went through for us to be sitting here today even trying to produce a movie called Color Muslim. They were incarcerated for long term. They were separated from their families. As you can see, Malcolm was one of my mentors. <laughs> anyway, this is my father standing over the coffin of El Haj Mali Shabazz, a.k.a. Malcolm X. When Malcolm was assassinated, there was a threat that went out that anyone who came near his body. This is an unwritten history I'm talking about. Many people don't know about this. As a result of that, we were confined to the South for our protection. And my father not only did the prayer for him, he made sure that he was buried properly, and he stood there with his wife, Betty Shabazz, as they put the last popping of soil on his grave. And when Betty Shabazz was burned to death, before her death, she requested my father to come and see her in the hospital, and he would lead her in prayer, and she could only move her finger because she was burned hundred degrees, all of her body was burning. And upon her death, my father was aging and he was ill, and he asked me to officiate her burial. So I had the honors to bury Betty Shabbat. As you see, that's me on the left, carrying a coffin. My ancestry, is from Western Sudan, Mali. In fact, my grandfather, my great grandfather's name, Grandpa Mad. And this was one of the terms that the slave master would give people who came from Muslim countries. They call you either or a or a man. And this is the culture that I was blessed to maintain that connection. We never lost our identity. And my father was the president of the oldest indigenous, indigenous Muslim organization in America that was established in 1938 by Professor Muhammad Hassadeen, who studied 10 years in Turkey and Egypt. But I grew up in Jim Crow South. You're too young to, to reflect on those days. Some of you may be able to remember that. The hardships, 
and the hard labor, and entire people being disenfranchised. Their culture, their language, their identity, everything that they had of honor and dignity and integrity was stripped from them. I grew up in those times. When those people who resisted the Jim Crow law, the just Dred Scott decision, they were either beat, tortured, or even lynched or terrified by white hatred mobs. The living conditions are very poor. And I'm saying this to let you know, give you a synopsis of how the movie is going to play out. An experience that includes many of you because the movie Color Me Muslim is not about Muhammad Jam. It's about an experience in a spiral manner that included many of you. And you being a result of those effects. This is the type of destitution that we had to endure. And I did it. And I think I survived the South very well. <laughs> because I did not become strange fruit. And now I'm back. Yeah. Right here in Rock And you know, the place in which I grew up in has been decimated, destroyed, reconstructed, rebuilt, redefined, redesigned. But when I come to Rock Hill, it's like nostalgia, deja vu. It's like a throwback. As I see the old buildings, I ride by these shops and see the old men peeping over their glasses. And I wonder, were those young old men wearing the hoods when I was a kid? And I wonder how they changed. And I wonder, has the South changed? And I think that the South has changed. Because the city of Rock Hill allowed us to have a chance for